Okay, so for this week's sketchbook, I'm going to have you do four different things. So again, we're talking about the idea of shape. And all of these exercises are going to be done with the idea that you can use different techniques to get a more accurate shape. So just for the sake of this demo, I have a photo here that I just grabbed from a magazine. Uh, but if you have, you know, a, a person that is willing to be your model or someone in the real world that you are, you know, friends with enough that they could sit down and be still with you for a while that would be ideal again all drawings with a from life are are just a little bit more accurate they have a little bit more uh dynamic ideas things like that it it is just easier to get the sensation of drawing from life but if that's not possible you can work from a photo and so that's what i'm doing right now and i have started to draw with the idea of organic shapes. So what is organic shapes? You can go back to your reading, but the idea of organic shapes, I think is easiest to think about uh, the idea of those kind of dummy figure life models, the little wooden guys that have little separate arms that you can kind of move and rotate along with their legs. And they're done in all organic shape. So an organic shape, just to refresh your memory, is one that is mostly curvilinear. It has soft edges. Think about circles. Think about ovals. Think about blobs. Um, also, when I am doing these drawings, I think about hips. You know, what is a circle of where the hips reside? Uh, what is a circle of where maybe the femur resides and just think about doing your drawings with these overlapping organic shapes and so that kind of softly correlates with the idea that bodies are made from organic shapes okay you can kind of break things down into roughly shape organic shapes and then you can kind of go back and see all right this sort of looks like the idea of a human, but I know that maybe this organic shape needs to be a little bit larger. So by breaking it down into very simple shapes, shapes that you can relate to something else, it does kind of help you think about the shape relationship between these things. And we're also, you know, vaguely thinking about perspective here and the the legs you know are, are forefront in this image so they're going to be a little bit larger than they might in real life but that's another thing to think about i am drawing what i am seeing not drawing what i know what does that mean that means i'm not drawing the football of an eye i'm not drawing you know the stick figure of a person i am drawing these odd shapes that i see these shapes that maybe don't don't even make sense to my brain. I'm just thinking, okay, well, these shapes look like this, and these shapes look like this, and this is how I'm relating them to other things, okay? So, you know, often shapes don't make sense in the way that we know a human body theoretically should look to us because we know people have arms they have a head that's attached to a neck but often when you're drawing they don't they don't actually look like that so for this image right here the neck looks large in comparison to the head the this femur looks significantly larger in comparison to the torso which i know is not true in real life but in this perspective of of the image i know that to be true so I'm drawing what I see, I am not drawing what I know. And I'm just gonna very briefly just kind of ground this drawing in the sensation of the chair. You know, and then from there, I can continue to work on this. So I'm thinking, all right, that kneecap actually does intersect with the thigh. I can go back and continue working on that in, in various ways. But the idea of a curvilinear drawing is simply this. I'm translating a 3D real figure image 
with with mass this person with mass and liveliness shape this very uh, three-dimensional idea of a human into curvilinear or organic shape that is what i am doing uh, it does not have to be incredibly purposeful and accurate to begin but i do want you to kind of guide yourself toward that so if i was going to continue think about the idea of the blocking exercise if i was going to continue breaking down all of this into more organic shape that gets me closer and closer to reality how how would i need to adjust all of those individual shapes okay you can use your eraser on this but the idea of curvilinear to this image is what we're going for now i'm going to go ahead and head toward the geometric so this is the same idea but opposite right so i am just using lines to make very generalized shapes with this and this is an exercise that i personally have found to be very successful because i can in my mind's eye think about shapes and straight lines so this is one that you know just personally kind of stuck with me and this is one that i use quite often to get a more accurate representation of a shape and I'm not thinking about individual shapes I'm not thinking about you know this is a shoulder and this is a hip and this is a leg I'm just simply trying to mimic the lines and the shapes that I'm seeing in this image okay and that also helps you get out of your head in drawing what I think I know about this object what I think I know about humans and the shapes of them, and really says, okay, forget about all of that. What am I actually seeing? What are the lines that I am actually mimicking here? And everyone's gonna find, you know, that particular thing that strikes them and the, the particular strategy tool that really hits home with them. But I, I really do like the straight line. Uh, because it does just make sense to how I articulate a 3D world into a 2D image. And you can think about lines that go straight across. And again, just like the blocking exercise that you did last week, you can go back and kind of continually readdress what those things, what those lines need from you. Okay, and then just very briefly again, describing the idea of the chair, but the chair I know is not, you know, the focal point for me, so I'm going to spend the majority of my time on the figure, and then the, the chair can be secondary. Okay, so there's an idea of an angular geometric translation of this. And again, this is the first step. This would be kind of similar to a gesture in that I'm not spending too much time on it. I am just simply taking this one idea and translating it through a number of different strategies to try to get the most, most accurate representation of that. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and do a mass gesture. So a mass gesture is an interesting take on a gesture drawing in that I am using essentially scribbles to get the idea of the figure, but I am kind of creating theoretical density. So more scribbles, more dense scribbles where I know the density of the figure lies. So we're saying, all right, the, the torso, the hand is layering on top of the hips. And the torso I know to have a lot of density. So I'm using quite a bit of scribble there. So a little bit of density in the head, light density around the head area, a little bit more along that jaw, center cranium, more density along the torso, maybe more in that ball and socket joint. 
this area that is layering so many elements, hips, hand, other hand and pockets has quite a lot of density. We'll let that go ahead and travel along to the legs. I know the knee has a lot of bones sort of layering on each other. And I'll go ahead and bring that down into the foot, which has not quite as much density. So that's all relatively light. Same thing with the other leg. That knee has a little bit more density traveling along to the foot. That has relatively light density. Maybe even spending some more time in this torso area where I know there's a lot of mass, a lot of volume, a lot of density. Shoulder area, torso area. Hips and the legs. So the, the density of the human body is mostly in that torso. So I'm creating a lot of density and mass in that area. And the lighter density in those other areas. Okay, so that's an example of a mass gesture. So it's the idea that where things overlap, where you have bones and flesh stacked upon one another, that's the sensation of a lot of dark scribbles indicating a lot of mass versus the edges of things where there's maybe just one element has lighter scribbles indicating there's less mass there. There's still mass, but there's less mass versus the areas that have a lot of perceived volume, a lot of layers, a lot of flesh, a lot of bone. So that's an example of a mass gesture. And the last one that I'm gonna talk you through is highlights. And when we do the highlights, we're gonna do a little bit of shadow work too. So this is similar with charcoal. So if you're working with charcoal, you do want to lay a base layer down first. This is a little bit more difficult with a graphite pencil, but we can still do it. So the idea is to get an overall gray tone. Once I do that, I can go back with my finger or a cloth and really smudge that. I'm really going in pretty heavy with this. And I want to get a gray tone. So maybe I'll take a couple of layers even. You can see I have a comparatively gray tone as compared to the bright white. So I'm looking at these two here and now the majority of my work is going to be done with an eraser. Obviously I have an eraser on the, the tip of my pencil here but if you have a Strathmore white rubber eraser that's ideal. If you have one of the retractable erasers that's going to be even easier for you. Uh, but just for ease of demo, I'm going to go ahead and start with this one here. So I'm noticing that the lightest area, the highlights, are with this face, a little bit of the neck. I see some downward highlights coming from the lapels of the suit, a little bit in that waist area, some with the pants kind of continuing down maybe to the tops of the knee. OK, 
Okay, so I am in my brain just distilling the brightest areas of this image. And I am only articulating those bright highlights. I am ignoring everything that is not a bright highlight. Okay, and again, I'm doing this very, very quickly, but you can go back and adjust this, rearrange if you need to. But that is my idea of the brightest areas of this image. Okay, again, very quickly, done very minim minimally, but looking at the brightest highlights of that image, translating those. So all those strategies are meant to give you the idea of strategies, tools to create the most accurate shape in your drawings.